Welcome back to The Rustic Wife. I'm Alana. So today I am in the kitchen and I am canning some tomatoes. Um, we had a total wipeout on our tomatoes. We got a blight, so I'm very devastated about that. But I have purchased some um, cases of plum tomatoes that I can can, and I'm going to be using those in the winter for um, fresh salsa or some pasta sauce or, um, I don't know, anything, anything that requires tomatoes. So I'm going to turn you around and show you how I do this. First, I'm just going to show you everything that I have, all my tools that I'm going to need to process these tomatoes. So I have my hot water bath canner here. Um, it's got water in it ready to go and the rack on the bottom. So the jars will sit up off the bottom of the canner. Then I have my jars here. These are quarts and or liters and they are already washed and dried. They're ready to go. Um, if you're processing any of your um, canned goods and the processing time is at least 10 minutes, you don't need to sterilize your jars anymore. Just make sure that they're clean. So I use those um, hot soapy water to clean those jars. And I've got my rings here and my inner lids. And these lids, because I'm using four jars um, canning lids, the instructions on the box do say to boil the lids to soften the um, gasket. Now check the directions on the lids that you'll be using because they don't always require that you need to boil the lids anymore. Um, I've got my jar lifter. I've got citric acid, with, which I will be adding to the jars of tomatoes. Um, some tomatoes aren't acidic enough, so you can either add citric acid or bottled lemon juice, so I choose citric acid. Measuring spoons for that. I've got um, a bamboo um, chopstick here. And that's a non-metallic utensil that I'm going to be using to debubble the jars once I fill them up with liquid. I've got a clean cloth here that I'm going to wipe the lids or the uh, jar rim before I put the lids on. I've got a tea towel here and that's so that when I put my hot jars on the counter they do not crack because the counter is colder than the jars coming out of the, can the canner. I'm going to be peeling the tomatoes as well so I need some boiling water. And then over here, I've got a pot here of cold water, and then I'll add some ice to that as well. Um, I've got my pot to, uh, to dispose of the skins when I peel them, and another pot for tomatoes. You can see I've already started. Got some peeled tomatoes there. I've got um, a little slotted spoon type of thing. That's to fish the uh, tomatoes in and out of the hot water, and my paring knife. And of course, I have some tomatoes. This kettle is already um, filled up and ready with boiling water and that's what I'm going to be adding to my um, tomatoes in the jar. So when I use tomatoes I like to make sure that they're fairly ripe. If they're not really ripe I find the skin very hard to remove from them so all I'm going to do is just put batches of tomatoes in the hot water. I'm just going to do small batches here because I don't want the tomatoes to cook and get mushy. I just want them to be soft enough so that when I put them in the cold water, the skins will release easily. So in this for maybe about 30 seconds, some people take a paring knife and they'll score a little X on the top of their tomato and that helps remove the skin, but I, I just don't bother. When I core them, the skin comes off fairly easily. Next, I'm just gonna transfer these tomatoes into the ice water. That helps to stop them cooking from being in the boiling water and also helps to slip those skins off. Now in between batches you may need to reboil this water to keep it quite hot so that the skins come off easily and you may need to add some more ice to your cold water pot. Okay so all I do is I just take a little paring knife here and I cut the core out and the skins come off fairly easily. This one really wasn't in the water long enough because the skin's not coming off as nicely, but it's still coming off. And if there's any little um, spots, any bad spots, I just cut them out. Now the reason why I add citric acid to my canned tomatoes is because Tomatoes aren't as acidic as we once thought that they were. 
Um, I would have, I always thought that they were quite acidic, but apparently they're borderline. Um, I think a lot of tomatoes are hybridized now to um, produce less acid, maybe for people with stomach issues or to maybe create a sweeter tomato. I think environment also makes a difference. Maybe the soil they're grown in when they're picked. But as I always say, um, whatever you feel comfortable doing in your own kitchen, do that. But I'm going to add um, citric acid to each one of my jars. So I, because I'm using quartz, I'll add a half a teaspoon of citric acid. If you're going to use lemon juice instead of citric acid, um, they also say to use bottled lemon juice instead of uh, fresh lemon juice, and it's the same reason. Certain varieties of lemons have uh, a different level of acidity, so it's just best to use the bottled lemon juice. So um, for each quart, that would be two tablespoons of lemon juice. For a pint, it would be one tablespoon of lemon juice. Citric acid is, for a quart, it would be um, a half a teaspoon for one of the citric acid, and for the pints, it's a quarter teaspoon. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in my jars and then fill the jars with tomatoes and then boiling water and put them into the water bath canner. I like to keep the jars warm in the canner because I'm going to be adding um, some boiling water here and I don't want to add boiling water to a cold jar and then put it into a warm um, canner because that could cause it to crack. I added the citric acid, now I'm filling it with my tomatoes and giving it a shake as I fill them to get them settled. Okay, so I've got them to about there. I don't want that tomato, I kind of want that down a little bit, just kind of squish it down a little bit. So we want that the liquid up to a half inch headspace. So if you have if you don't have one of those tools to um, figure out your headspace. These rings here, so this one at the bottom here equals a one inch headspace. This one is a half and the top is a quarter inch. So I'm going to take my non-metallic tool and put this down the side to debubble it and then I'll look at the headspace and readjust it and then put the lid on. So you just want to slide that tool down between the jar and the food so that you can release some of the air that's trapped in around your your food. Now this tomato, to me, I don't really like. I don't really like how high that tomato is sitting up there, so I'm gonna cut that in half. There, so that's sitting down a little bit lower. So I'm going to readjust the headspace now. That's at a half inch, so I'm gonna wipe the rim of the jar to make sure there's no liquid or food on top of the rim and then I'm going to put the lid finger tight and then we'll add it to the canner. Another thing you can add to your canned tomatoes too is some salt. If you don't have to, it doesn't add to the safety of the, of the canned product. Um, it just adds some flavor. So if you want to add salt in, you can. If not, you can omit it. Um, I just added about a half a teaspoon of salt. Now, I add pickling salt. Any kind of salt you want to use, as long as there's not um, any anti-caking agents or additives that might make your brine cloudy or may affect the quality of your tomatoes, but they're going to be mushy at some point anyway, so <laughs> I don't really think it's a big huge deal if you use table salt, but anyway, I'm using pickling salt. That's the last jar to go in the canner. So you want one to two inches of water above the lids, but you'll see that that water is too high. Once that gets boiling, it's going to really sputter and bubble out everywhere. So I'm just going to remove some of the water. So that should be good. You can see it's about two inches above the lids. So what we're going to do is turn the stove top up to high and put the lid on it. 
once that comes to a full rolling boil, we're going to set the timer for 45 minutes. For quarts, it's 45 minutes. For pints, it's 40 minutes. Now that processing time is for my area, but if you live above 1,000 feet altitude, you're going to have to adjust your processing time. And anything um, higher than that, again, the time will be adjusted. So I'm going to leave a chart in the description box for you to check out, and that'll tell you how long you need to process your food, depending on where you live. OK, the water is at a full rolling boil. So I'm going to set the timer for 45 minutes, and then we'll come back to it. So if the water starts bubbling like really out of control, you can always just turn your stove top from high down to about number six. It'll still maintain that um, full rolling boil that you want, but it just won't get out of control. Okay, our timer just went off, so I'm just going to shut the stove top off. And I'm just going to let that settle down for about a minute, and then I'm going to move it over to a cold, cold burner. Okay, I have it moved over to the cold burner, and I'm just going to crack the lid a little bit like that, and just let that sit. For okay, we're going to take the, this lid off, and then slowly take them out of the canner. Put it on your paper, on your tea towel. If there's water on the top of your lid, don't tip it off because that could hinder your seal. Um, it'll just evaporate, so just leave it. And once you put them on the on the countertop on your tea towel, just leave them for about 12 to 24 hours. So you just want to leave these on the countertop, and you don't want them touching because you want some airspace between them. Um, you just want to leave them on the countertop until about 12 to 24 hours and don't touch them, don't do anything, just leave them. And if they have all sealed, that's great. You remove the rings and wash the jar and label it and store it in a cool, dark place. If they have not sealed, store them in the refrigerator for about a week and eat them up so it'll be fine. Um, also, do not retighten the rings at all so like I said just don't touch them. If you look in the canner there you can see the water is discolored. I had a little bit of siphoning going on and siphoning is when you have a little bit of liquid loss. Uh, some reasons for siphoning would be um, I've likely filled the liquid too full and it's siphoned out so that's okay so just as long as they seal they'll be fine. So it's the next day and I've got my jars here. They've been washed. I've taken the, the rings off and I've washed the jars and I need to label them before I put them on the canning shelf. Um, but you can see here that they've all sealed and they're floating, which is perfectly normal. Um, I did raw pack. So there's more air in the tomatoes when they're raw than if you were to do a hot pack. So it's normal for them to float. So you can see the liquid at the bottom, normal, and you can see here the liquid has decreased and that's normal as well because if you remember uh, we filled the liquid up to a half inch headspace and now it's down to about there, which is fine because that's, that's again normal uh, as the tomatoes shrink during the processing time it loses some air and the uh, liquid will uh, decrease, so that is normal. Now this jar right here, you can see it's different. The fruit has sunk to the bottom, whereas these ones have floated, even though I've done the, the same um, processing type with the raw pack. You can see there's a significant amount of liquid loss in this one. Now that would be fine. You All you need is a, about half of the liquid in there, but over time, the fruit that will be above the liquid level will go will turn brown and just doesn't look as nice. But with this one, I do know that this jar is likely the one that was siphoning, which means the liquid is escaping during the processing time. And I know that because, remember, we looked and there was some uh, discoloration of the water in the canner. So this one is likely the one that was siphoning the liquid. And 
I am suspicious, even though this is sealed, it's got a good seal on it, I'm suspicious that there will be some food bits trapped underneath this lid, which eventually might mold if this seal isn't as good as I think it is, and it will lift the lid and then cause food spoilage. So I'm going to take this one and store it in the refrigerator and then use that within a week. So just to be on the safe side. So you can see over here, I have more tomatoes to process today. I'll get those canned up and put on our pantry shelves for winter use. So I hope this video helps if you're planning on canning your own tomatoes. And if you like today's video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you again next time.